A pair of star-crossed lovers in Ireland get caught up in their family's land dispute. Hey, how's it going everybody and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. Elliot here today to give you all my early movie review for the new drama film Wild Mountain Time which will be available this Friday, December 11th on VOD. I'm going to let you all know what I thought about this movie and if you should check it out in this spoiler free review before we dive into the details. As you can see on the screen now, make sure you're following me on all my other social media accounts that way you all can stay up to date with what's going on over here at Movie Files. If you are new to the channel, welcome to this community. Consider subscribing and while you're at it, hit that bell so you don't miss any of my other early movie reviews tv coverage live streams all the fun things we do on this very channel it will mean a lot to me if you all can share this video and give it a thumbs up it helps out the channel but i also really appreciate it and in the comments let me know if you all were excited for this movie and if you've seen the film Let's discuss everything. This film has a lot of controversy behind it, and we'll talk about it here in this video. But let me know your pros, your cons, and let's discuss this film in the comments below. So for me, I, I really didn't know anything about this film up to about three weeks ago. I get an email every single month uh, regarding what's coming out on VOD, this, that, and the other. And I see the poster. I'm like, oh, this is what, a, a, a romance coming out? Scroll down a little bit. I see that cast. And I mean Emily Blunt, John Hamm, Christopher Walken. And I'm like, you know what? I didn't read the synopsis. I didn't watch the trailer. I said, I have enough faith in this cast and I'm probably going to have a good time with this movie no matter what the subject matter is, no matter what the plot is. So I'm going to go in cold and here we are talking about this movie. Now, look, I always try to find positive things to say about a movie and I'm going to try to do that with this film. I really didn't have that much entertainment with this movie, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So let's kick things off with the positives. Look, I talked about the cast. I think the saving grace of this entire movie is Emily Blunt, who plays Rosemary, who at a very young age, she's told by her father to not take any nonsense from anyone, especially someone that bullies her very early on in the film. She takes that and carries that into her adult years as she's taking care of her mom, who's not in the best health. So she has to take over the farm. She has to take care of the horses and all that stuff. And she is it's just she doesn't like to take stuff from people except for one person and that's her neighbor that she is madly in love with and that is Anthony played by Jamie Dorden and I'll say this I think that Anthony and Rosemary they're quirky they're wild kind of interesting characters and I think the actors and this goes for everyone in this film I think they did the best that they could with not a good script but I think they gave it everything they could and I thought Emily Blunt was really a, a fun character I, I'll be honest I, I had some fun with the character she's very weird she's very outlandish she just loves this man she's pouring her heart out to this man but he is not reciprocating that love and I think you know Emily Blunt I think she's such a fantastic actress I look at her career I think she's great in dramas I think she's great in you know badass characters from Sicario and Edge of Tomorrow and I think she has such great comedic time and whether it be the five-year engagement whether it be the devil wears Prada I think she's so funny and I think she brings a lot of that sensibility in, in her comedy timing in this role again the comedy doesn't always work but it's just this when you see this film and you you see Rosemary, she's such just like a uh, an out there outlandish character and I, and it speaks to like this film's kind of tone which I don't think this film is supposed to be grounded it, it almost feels like this film is like a folklore almost kind of the characters seem very cartoonish very outlandish and I think that uh that plays more in the negative for me which I'll talk a little bit about later but I think Emily Blunt I, I think is more of her as an actress that really kind of shine through in this role like she just has such great charisma so such great screen presence that I think that saved this kind of weird quirky character where if someone else was playing this character I don't think I would have enjoyed the character as much but Emily Blunt is definitely the saving grace outside of those things I don't think there's much else I can say positively uh, there is a portion of the film once you get into this film again it's very kind of almost feels very uh, la la land like really kind of again everyone seems so cartoonish that I don't feel like it's grounded in reality so once you get to a certain part in the film where it gets really off the rails you at that point in the film like you know what Rosemary's insane. Anthony's has this secret that is just so weird. And, you know, Christopher Walken and his accent and John Hamm, you know, trying to get into the mix. It's just like, you know what? I'm just going to watch it for what it is. I'm just watching a train wreck happen. So let's just, speaking of train wreck, let's just go into the criticisms here. This film, um, again, after watching, I did some research and this is based on a stage play. And the creator of that stage play is the writer and director in this film. And when I was looking up, you know, just some reviews of the stage play, I really didn't find that much great praise about it and uh, when you see this translate into a film it looks like this film is trying to be a play and sometimes in plays you know it's the energy in the room it's the quirkiness that you might be able to see in a live you know you have a crowd there that can feed off the energy but in this movie man it is a it is marketed as a romance and there is an obviously a love story going on here with Anthony and Rosemary's character but 
This is more of a rom-com. This film is a slapstick comedy, and man, the comedy falls flat a lot of times. I, I, I think of Jamie Dorden, who I'm not too familiar with his work. I've seen him in the Fifty Shades Grey movie. I saw him in the one film, and I've seen like moments from the other ones. He is a very just, like I said, cartoonish is like the best way I can describe these characters. And he is the most cartoonish character in this entire film. And, and when you when you meet him, he's very, you know, he has his dad that he's taken care of, who's played by Christopher Walken, which again, we'll get to Christopher Walken here in a bit in that accent. But his dad is up there in age. He, he, he can't take care of the farm anymore. He wants to pass down his farm to his son, Anthony. But Anthony just isn't, you know, equipped to take care of the farm in, in the eyes of his father because he hasn't found anyone to fall in love with. And of course, that's where Emily Blunt comes in but I don't know man Jamie he's just a I think he's only the actually the only actor from Ireland and we'll, again I'm gonna save the worst part of this film for last which is those accents but I don't know Jamie just uh didn't work for me in the role John Hamm I love him I, I love him as uh you know Don Draper from my Madman fans out there but John Hamm in movies just doesn't work for me I like him in some films Baby Driver Bad Times at the El Royale you know some other movies here and there but for whatever reason, John Hamm just doesn't work for me in the movies, and he has a lot of charm and charisma in, in a lot of his roles, but he he didn't have any charm and charisma for me in this film, um, and let's just get down to the legend in this movie, you know, and that's Christopher Walken. I'm a big fan of Christopher Walken. I used to do the accent. Eh, I can't do it. I'm not going to even try to do it. That was terrible for what I just did there, but ask, speaking of accents... I'm not a dialect coach, and I saw the controversy online in regards to the uh, the accents in this film. I think the only person, like I said, in this film is Jamie that comes from Ireland, uh, but everyone else... The accents were just so, 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 so bad. It's one of the worst accents I've ever seen in a film for people trying to portray people from Ireland. I don't know. I don't want to accuse the writer and director of doing this, but I felt like they were making fun of people from Ireland just based on how Chris Walken couldn't hold that accent for more than a second. Emily Blunt, I love you to death, but even your accent was cutting in and out. And, you know, even Jamie, I know he's from Ireland, but the accent he was putting on just kind of felt, it was the most, probably the most authentic of the entire cast, but... Man, those accents are just really bad, and it takes you out of the film, because again, I don't know if they're poking fun of people from Ireland, again, I don't want to accuse the director of that, but it just seems so, like, over the top, these accents are just so, so, so bad, and then it plays into this really bad script, this story that I just found to be so uninteresting, and just no, like, nature of, like, like, it's just not compelling, it's just so bland, it's this story, again, I don't want to spoil anything, but it's just like, who cares about this farm life, I do not care, it is so boring to me, and then once you get to the third act, that's when the film, like I said, if there were some positive things to take out of this movie, you know, besides Emily Blunt, the third act is just like off the rails. We're just watching these two people in a house going back and forth, talking about craziness. I'll just say that without spoiling anything. Uh, when you find out Anthony's secret, it's just like, what? Again, I don't know if it plays. I didn't find that many great reviews on the play, but I don't know if the stage play just plays better because it's quirky. It's an audience there. You can, you maybe you can, you know, have fun with the characters on stage. But in this film, I just, I, I didn't find this film to be entertaining. I didn't find it to be funny. I find the script to be very poor. The pacing is almost damn near two hours, which was two hours too long because this film just didn't work for me. So before I give you all my overall thoughts uh, and, and give you my score and let you know it's worth checking out, make sure you like this video, share this video, hey i might be harsh in this film it just didn't work for me but if you enjoyed it let's discuss it in the comments and as always subscribe and hit the notification bell overall thoughts um man this film just wasn't for me at all I, again i applaud the actors trying to do their best the accents are so so bad in this movie Emily, I still love you. You know, John Hamm, I'm still a fan. Christopher Walken, I'm still a fan. Jamie, I'll give you some more chances. I just haven't really found that role that I liked you in. But I don't know, man. This was just a bad movie from top to bottom. Uh, the director and writer, who is actually a, a director who's very competent. He's a screenwriter. He, he has a movie that came out in the 80s, uh, Moonstruck, that actually won Best Play. So he's a or Best uh, Written Script. He's a great writer. He's a solid director. He did the film in 2008, Doubt, which I really love. But... I don't know what was going on in this movie. It just didn't work for me. So with that being said, I'm going to give Wild Mountain Time a 2 out of 5. And I'll give it 2 just for the fact that Emily Blunt had fun with that character at moments. And when you get to that third act, it's just so wacky. You just can't help but to laugh. So I'll give it 2 just for that. But outside of that... The acting wasn't all that great. The script wasn't all that great. The quirkiness, the wackiness just didn't really work for me. And those goddamn Irish accents were so bad. 
oh my goodness. But hey, that's just me. That's my thoughts. Let me know in the comments if you all saw this film and if you enjoyed it. That's fantastic. Let's discuss your positives. But if you were more like me and didn't enjoy it as well, let's just continue this conversation in the comments below. As always, thank you all for watching my review. Make sure to like, share, comment your thoughts in the comments section. As always, subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any of my other content. Again, it comes out on the 11th. I don't think it's worth paying for, but again, I'm not someone to tell you how to spend your money. If you want to see a wacky, weird film, this might be the film for you, but it just wasn't for me. But again, I hope you all enjoyed this review. Hope you're staying safe, and we'll see you in the next video.